Hey guys, I'm Fog here and welcome to another FIFA 21 Rule Breakers Blur Review and today guys we're going to be doing the 82 rated centre back from the USA, aka Opara. Uh, I did actually buy this guy for my main team to replace Thiago Silva for the time being, just to kind of see what he's like. I am aware I'm using him on 7 chemistry but I'm not going into Division 3 foot rivals with a full MLS team at this stage of the game, absolutely no chance. He's fine to play with on 7 chemistry and after 10 games we'll go to 8 chemistry. I'm not using a full MLS team um, at all, absolutely no chance. And so uh, seven chemistry though. Even with the uh, chem style, he still gets uh, increases to his stats. So I was very happy with that. But uh, yeah, I did buy him for thirty-five thousand coins. Four games played with him, zero goals scored and zero assists. He does also have two star skills as well as two star weak foot. Uh, some of his main top in-game stats: the likes of his ninety-three reactions, his ninety-three ball control. Um, not his 93 ball control, his 93 composure, uh, his 92 sprint speed, and also his 86 heading accuracy. I had the backbone canvas that applied to him, and he has the injury prone and power header traits as well. I thought he was fine. I thought he did, for the most part, a very good job. I think that, looking at the cards on the whole, I don't know if he's had a reduction to any of his stats. I want to say maybe his physicality has been reduced a little bit, but even with the backbone chem style, his strength goes up to 82, which is still pretty decent. His jumping goes up to 89. Um, he was a great card to use in the game. For me, there were three good parts to him. I will start actually off with that physicality. I still thought it was very good. It, uh, you know, he does offer a good, like, high presence on the team. I think he's well over six foot. Um, six foot two, so he's obviously got the decent high presence, and his physicality stats, are, you know, on the whole, are still really, really solid. So he can still bully players off the ball. He can still hold his ground very well. So that was absolutely fine. His tackling as well, very solid all around. You know, that backbone counts as his interceptions, uh, all the way up to eighty six. His stance goes up to ninety. Defensive one up to eighty three. That was fine once again. The majority of the clips were of him making defense plays, which I was fine with. Uh, so I couldn't fault that at all. And then also his passing, I thought was actually really good. Um, he started off one attack where he passes it to Lucas Moura, Moura to Suarez, Suarez to Socrates in the back of the net. That attack was started off with a par with a great um, pass along, uh, you know, along the floors. So um, his passing stats are solid, 83 short passing, 74 long passing, his long passing as well goes up to 79. So I was very happy with his passing. His range of passing it is really, really good. That's what I want for a centre-back. I like to have centre-backs with good passing. I think it's very, very important. I think a lot of people should pay attention to it, in my personal opinion. And uh, and he delivered in that area very well. I thought his pace was fine. Um, it doesn't feel as good as 88 pace, I've got to be honest. Don't get me wrong. He doesn't feel anywhere near slow at the same time. Um, but he's not like amazingly quick. I think Carlos Alberto's got the same pace as him. I think. Hold on, let me just check a second. I'm pretty certain Carlos Alberto has got the same pace. And Carlos Alberto, I'll tell you guys right now, haven't used it in, in um, you know, both of them alongside each other for the three games. If I just get my controller connected now, I believe also has 88 overall pace. He has 82 pace. Um, but I did have the Shadow Cam style apply to him, so his pace actually goes inside the low 90s. But Carlos Alberto feels so much more quicker um, than what Aparo does. I'm not saying that Aparo is slow. He just doesn't feel like he's got 88 pace, in my personal opinion. But he's not going to like get outpaced all the time or anything like that. He's just... Doesn't feel as quick as 88 pace. I just want to make that clear. But his passing, his tackling, his physicality, that was all solid for the most part. Um, he felt pretty good choosing the ball. Felt relatively smooth as well for a centre-back, which is also a nice added bonus. So, on the whole, he played very well. Um, I, I do like what EA are doing with his rule-breaker promos where they're making cards... Not just from like the big five major leagues, you have the branching out to all the leagues for these promos, you know, Texera from uh, the CSL who costs a lot of coins. I'd like to be able to use him, but he's such a risky buy, like 400k. I don't know if he's going to like dramatically fall down in price over the next day or whatever, so uh, I want to stay clear of him. But I'm just like, no, they're not going towards like the classic cards of previous years where they always seem to reuse the same type of players over and over. We're even getting cards like Van Anhol too. I can't remember when he had like his last special card, uh, Pedento. I want to try and get a review out later on today as well who uh, I think will be a very good card. So I'm loving the promo. And of course, it's the final team of the promo now. It would be great if we got like a guaranteed rule breakers pack. I, I think we could honestly get that. You know, uh, that would be absolutely insane. But this is a power card. He did well for what he goes for in the market. And I think even on seven chemistry, he, he was solid for that. So um, my plan is to keep him from now on. Uh, I, that, so I was very, very happy with him uh, on the whole. But anyway, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed watching this video. And I'll see you guys later.